punk goes pop, punk goes 90s, punk goes acoustic, punk goes to jail. Okay, that last one was an earnest joke. The Punk Go series started much earlier than people realized in 2000 and kind of as a gimmick that turned into a juggernaut of releases all the way to 2019. Fearless Records had a simple idea to get bands noticed and once the franchise took off, the label ran with it. Looking back, it was definitely a cash in to get attention for covering the top 40 songs by actual punk bands. Then in the 2000s format was off the rails and roughly any punk, emo, pop core, metal for whatever band could cover just about anything popular and it would fit on a compilation like this somehow. What's wild? There are some solid covers on here, and at times from unsuspecting names. This list is not a top 10, no ranking, just a list of well-made covers from the Punk Go series. As YouTube has changed, I'm limited to how much I can play from each song. So there is a link to each song in the video description and pinned comment for you to check out. This video is sponsored by Audible. With every new year comes many resolutions to improve, be more creative and productive, etc. Famous producer Rick Rubin, responsible for albums from System of a Down, Slipknot, Audio Slave, and more, has an amazing audio book about creativity. Rick Rubin gives amazing insight on how to be open to creative ideas, fighting self-doubt and distractions, being patient, learning to collaborate, and more. And thanks to Audible, you can check it out for free. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from the entire catalog, including the latest bestsellers and new releases. You can choose the creative act, A Way of Being, or many other self-help titles and rock and roll autobiographies. Members also get full access to a growing selection of included audiobooks, as well as audio originals and podcasts, which you can download all you want. The Audible app makes it easy to listen anytime, anywhere, while traveling, working out, doing errands or chores, anything. Visit audible.com slash get rocked or text get rocked to 500-500 to try Audible free. Link is in the video description to hear the creative act from one of the most well-known rock and metal producers ever. You know how these videos work? Let's get to it. Starting off with arguably the biggest cover ever from the Punk Go series. It was so big that it helped launch I Prevail's career into new heights, and that's a totally fair statement. Just the sheer association with and competent tribute to Taylor Swift is enough to make a band big. I can joke around, but I Prevail owe a lot of their career to this blank space cover. Also keep in mind this is two male vocalists trying to cover the Swifties' queen, and then putting metalcore riffs with the singing. Everything about this could have been a recipe for disaster, but it turned out to be exactly what Punk Go's pop needed. How successful was I Prevail's cover? It was certified platinum in the US. To have that distinction for a cover song in the 2010s is massive, especially for a breakout track off a compilation album. Keep in mind, I Prevail was only around for barely a year when this cover was released. Not a bad way to get noticed. I Prevail made Blank Space their own, which is important for cover songs. They do a solid job with everything. And the band did not upset Taylor Swift or her fan base. That would have killed the band's career right on the spot. Remember the fray? No, really, remember them? Yeah, I had trouble also, I admit. I never got big into the fray, so I know I'll be corrected by some fray fans and how big they were, but I remembered the song over my head. But what I remember more is a Day to Remember's cover from the second Punk Goes Pop album. A Day to Remember one up the fray here. I mean that also. I totally prefer this version to the original. The group shouting, the loud to soft moments, the big range. Jeremy sounds great. There is a good example of what Punk Goes could offer if done by the right group and the group was allowed to cover what they wanted. A day to Remember used to do the song live also. That would have been a nice little treat back in the day to see a group go heavy on a song like this, especially for the people in the crowd who hadn't yet heard of A Day to Remember. Might have thought it was their own song with how much personality and effort they put into Over My Head. The cover would eventually be put on the Attack of the Killer B-Sides album in 2010. I do miss this side of A Day to Remember, which was loud and being genuinely fun to hear and a good time. You are allowed to do that, and back then, this was a group that made sure everyone had a good time singing along to the fray. How do you cover a huge 90s pop hit from an Australian woman? You have an Australian post-hardcore band come in and make sure Miss Imbruglia is showed some respect. Maybe it's the Australian Association. Maybe the band idolized Natalie growing up. Either way, they nailed this cover of Torn. Natalie Imbruglia's voice is hard to duplicate when put on a 90s-tastic song like Torn, so Trenton Woodley put all his effort into giving his own inflection. Add some solid instrument work and it makes Hands Like Houses sounding like they are worshipping the woman as opposed to just trying to make a cover. Torn has been covered by many different artists since it came out and in many different styles, but it's hands like houses that should get credit for really putting a good display of talent on this cover for a cover. I said that correctly. Natalie Imbruglia's version is a cover also from the band Edna Swap, who originally wrote and performed the song tour. Covers on covers here.
Hence Like Houses were always a wildly unappreciated band, and Torn shows they are much more versatile than post-hardcore and shouting out lyrics to short riffs. Australia should be proud. Justin Timberlake will never have an unclean section in his music, but We Came As Romans took care of that when they covered My Love. This is the pop format song from a huge name that on paper should not work when covered by a metalcore band, but again, We Came As Romans took care of that. The band did that by keeping so many clean singing segments in, almost at a falsetto level in the verses. When the choruses kick in, it's that you hear the barely resembling My Love and how it originally was. The rolling delivery of Don't Give Away My Love was never meant to be growled out like that, and good for We Came As Romans for figuring it out how to make it work. The guitar play and effects in the bridge also give a bit more spice to the song, extending it into a more traditional heavy music track. This cover was on volume three and a good amount of time before We Came As Romans started getting attention on satellite radio and at festivals. Long before their success was this cover of Justin Timberlake. We Came As Romans performed the cover many times, and I think that distinct detail of keeping some of the song poppy and upbeat made it stand out so that it wasn't just a Justin Timberlake song with a bunch of screaming. Though maybe looking back, we should have screamed at Justin Timberlake a bit more. I remember this cover getting a lot of attention many years ago, and when I put out the call for suggestions of good punk ghost covers, a static lullaby kept coming up. Britney Spears is a hard woman to cover without sounding like parody or just goofing off, unless it's a cover of Toxic and it helps a band get a fan base. I also remember hearing this cover on FM radio stations back in the day. That is still wild to me. Was it because it was Britney being covered or because a static lullaby did a great job? Knowing FM radio, probably leaning toward pushing anything Britney related, but the cover worked well and a static lullaby deserves some credit. Joe Brown and Dan Arnold had a huge task in making Fearless Records happy and not making Britney fans unhappy, and their own fans for that matter. This cover stuck to the original track as a true guideline and slide riffed all over while cleans and uncleans rain down over the entire song. The down tuning, I think, also helped to give it more distinction between the original. The screaming was almost hysterical, and at the time, it was what the group needed to get attention. And not to upset anyone, but I think this might be their biggest accomplishment. Remember when Mumford & Sons was the big thing? I mean, every radio station and every movie soundtrack was drooling over this group. Mumford & Sons really fell by the wayside over the years, but Tonight Alive helped immortalize the time with a faster and heavier cover of Little Lion Man, and it's great. One of the reasons it's great is the gradual buildup Tonight Alive used. Starts off soft with Jenna McDougal, and then by the end, it's shredding and everyone at a rush. The track is a totally different take on the song and amplified by the volume and energy as opposed to repeated banjo plucks for four minutes. Every time Tonight Alive would do Warp Tour in the States, they would cover it also. They got mileage out of this Mumford & Sons cover, and I think many people legit preferred this version to the original after hearing Tonight Alive give a filled out performance. This cover was released on Volume 4 in 2011, so shortly after Mumford & Sons released the original. Fast forward to this year, and Tonight Alive are scheduled for When We Were Young Festival to play the other side in entirety. Makes me wonder if the festival would allow them extra four minutes to play this cover. It's just four minutes when we were young, come on. Punk went pop, punk went 90s, and punk also went crunk. Now I know what I just said sounds terrible, but there were some covers that really worked. The Devil Wears Prada took a crack at Still Fly from Big Timers, and it barely resembles the original. This is what happens when you tell a metalcore band to go crunk. And shockingly, it works. I don't know if Fearless Records actually expected success out of Punk Goes Crunk. It seems like a joke, but the Devil Wears Prada gave it their all and made a strong track out of it. I mean, they held nothing back on the delivery and just proved they were still fly. <laughs> Roughly five minutes of a sweeping metalcore band and tons of screaming and growling. They still kept some of the ascending notes from the original in the verses, but they definitely added the slow breakdown. Pretty sure that wasn't in the original with the screaming. If you play the original from the early 2000s and this cover back to back, many people would not know they were the same writing. It's an alternate universe cover. People were nostalgic for covers just like the originals though, and the Devil Wears Prada should go crunk again sometime. <laughs> 
As soon as someone says Wonderwall, a room full of eyes start rolling, especially when they start trying to imitate the Gallagher voices. It's become a real life meme. But when you have a band like Cartel trying to make it a bit more electric and grunge sounding, the eye rolls aren't as warranted. I was not as familiar with Cartel, and this cover was really the only thing I knew about the group for a long time. But wow, this cover stood out in good ways. Punko's 90s had some gems on it, and this is definitely one of them by livening up the Oasis track. Cartel brings the song up at the right moments and makes it huge. They did the cover live on TV and performed it live for years, again proving that careers can be helped with punk ghost covers. Hearing the drum track on this song, making it feel like a 90s rock song, along with making everything stand out near the bridge, the emotion and loud choruses helps the cover soar way louder than the original. Cartel was a pop punk band that MTV pushed, toured with big names, and is another group coming for When We Were Young Festival. I need to catch up on Cartel because I like what they did here, and I want to see what more they have, besides Wonderwall. I followed Paris for a while, and it wasn't until I started researching the Punk Ghost catalog that I found out Paris covered Chandelier by Sia. Turns out Punk Ghost Pop Volume 6 had a ton of material that people enjoyed, even if the punk label wasn't as mandatory. It worked out for Paris and Fearless to do that. Lin Gunn's vocals are great and fit this cover like a glove. The delivery and the mixing on the track make it stand out as a strong alternative track. She nails the performance and everything is polished to make the song match the pop style of the original while not being too poppy. This is a solid example of a band who already had an established sound and can use it to match a pop single that's already out there. Everything lined up and Paris didn't have to modify their style too much. You can hear the original in this, but also hear Paris. Lynn hits those high notes and the layering is nice. The cover is not just a cheap ripoff for cash in and it proves the band's talent. This might be the most accessible cover for non-rock fans as well as because it still captures the original pop side and not scare people away like the other covers. Any band that can make Maroon 5's music more interesting deserves some credit. It took a band like Ice Nine Kills to actually get to that point, but somehow this cover of Animals works great when performed with energy and volume and emotion. You know, like a song. Weird how Ice Nine Kills nails it, but Maroon 5 can't. It opens up with a nice fast opening strum which sets the recognition to the original, but then Spencer Charnas and company actually put in effort. It works because there's a sense of anticipation to each loud section and you know it's coming. The chorus as a result brings it together again like a song. Ice Nine Kills gave anger and frustration to this track, and it made something barely resembling the band that originally wrote it. It still has that flowing pop-flavored chorus, but you can hear this is nothing close to Adam Levine. The drum blast, the riffs, the screaming. If random people heard this, they wouldn't know it was a cover, and a pop cover at that. Ice Nine Kills has done several fun covers over the years, but this is a standout because they took an initially creepy and at times grating Maroon 5 track and made it lively and fun to hear. That's straight up dark magic at that point. I put the links to each song in the description and pinned comments. They are worth checking out. Also, I feel this is something that can make a decent comeback someday, even if just released online. You know, so long as the covers are good. That being said, we will be focusing on some of the misses of Punk Goes Pop and all the other related collections. I already knew of several of them, but then I got more pointed out to me. I did not know some songs could be twisted or even butchered so badly, but I understand now. You got to fill out these compilation albums somehow though, even if a cover is awful. That'll be next time.